It's delightful to have you here, Meredith. I am so excited to talk all about high protein meals and how you started the spoon and you have a wonderful Instagram page, which is where I connected with you. I don't even know when, but I have started following because of your recipes, your high protein recipes. And I always am loving your tank tops that you're wearing. <laughs> so I, like, oh, <laughs> man, put another link on there. because You seem to be I built similar to me. So I'm all right, I can get some more tank tops. Um, but it's really fun to have you here. Um, I love your stories every day and um, following you there. And I get a lot of useful information. So I know all of our listeners will as well. So thanks for coming on today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to chat and meet you in person-ish instead of just on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can connect with so many cool people on Instagram. So um, I'm glad you're here today. So tell us, start with your backstory. And um, like, I don't even know why you're called the Peach Spoon or like, I just found you. I'm like, oh, I really like this lady. She's so good at what she does. But well, give me that story about how, you know, you started your page and, um, how you got to, we're going to talk about in a, in just a minute here, the launch of your second cookbook. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So I've always had blood sugar issues. And so that's why when I found you, I'm like, Oh, we're like-minded with our plate balance and all, all, the, all that stuff. I love all the blood sugar stuff. So I've just always had, as an adult, I've had blood sugar issues. So in 2005, I was a newlywed and I was not feeling well. I kept having like fainting episodes and um, the doctor diagnosed me with hypoglycemia. And it's funny because he said, and I've never heard this before. He said, pretty much if you want a piece of cake, you need to eat like a whole piece of chicken first. Like you need to eat protein first. And that was like way, you know, before the curve of people talking about blood sugar. So that was on my radar. And I thought about that. I tried to eat healthy, but honestly, I got pregnant right away. We had three kids back to back. And so I was in survival mode and I tried to eat protein, but you know, it was more of the American diet and peanut butter jelly and whatever. I was just surviving. Um, so, <laughs> so I had three young kids. I didn't feel good. I was having anxiety. I was having migraines and I just wasn't feeling great. And that was around 2012 when Whole30 was new. So I was like, well, I'll try that. Um, and I felt a little better. Like I finally was eating more like clean foods or healthier whole foods, that kind of thing. But it still wasn't the missing link in me not feeling good. I was having these blood sugar crashes in the afternoon, almost like a bingey type of thing. I'd be like stressed out, ang anxious, but it was like a blood sugar crash. And now I know I didn't have enough protein at breakfast and lunch. So I was like, these cravings were nourishment catch up too. So it was like a blood sugar crash plus my body playing nourishment catch up. And I just didn't have willpower or self-control and kind of would overeat every afternoon. And then the mindset of I'll start another whole 30 tomorrow and all of that. So it wasn't really a healthy relationship with food either. So I finally figured out once I finally, just with my own research, listening to podcasts and all this stuff, I really started doing these high protein loaded smoothies at breakfast. And that was my aha moment when I finally got out of the bad cycle with food and I just felt good. I wasn't having those low blood sugar drops and that kind of thing. And so all this time, it was about like five years went by and I was like, my kids were in elementary and I was like, I feel like I'm supposed to be doing something. Like I have this passion. I love, you know, making recipes. I like, but I don't really like to cook. I like to make easy recipes. Um, and I just like to encourage others. And so that was when finally, in 2019, I was like, I'm just going to start an Instagram, start putting, I'll just post a smoothie. This made me feel really good. This, you know, healed my relationship with food. And I don't think about food all the time. I shut off hunger. I feel great. My blood sugar feels better. So I started Peachy Spoon um, with a smoothie recipe and I just started posting and it's just kind of blossomed into this full like business and that kind of thing. But the name, the Peachy Spoon is literally, I just thought it sounded Southern. I'm in Alabama. So I just thought it sounded Southern and happy. Um, and nobody on Instagram had it yet. So that was kind of like, I was like, oh, well, let's take it real quick for somebody. Else. And my husband, of course, was like, You're, we're not in Georgia, you know, Georgia Peach. I'm like, it's fine. I think it's cheerful and it doesn't have to do with diets or anything like that, you know? Um, so yeah, so I just started posting, posting recipes and um, just showing up on there over and over again. And it sl slowly has grown for sure. Um, and I actually at first was doing, I got some certifications and was doing health coaching and that kind of thing. Um, and I got a little bit overwhelmed with the one-to-ones. I couldn't keep up. So I made an online course. Um, and now I actually have a registered dietitian on my staff that's approved all my info. I even went through some legal stuff. We can talk about, I mean, I'm, I'm an open book. We can talk about whatever, but, um, but anyway, so, so yeah, so I've done that. And then slowly I've, um, now I have my second cookbook coming out and a protein powder. So I've got, it's, it's evolved into like a full business, but it's really fun. 
Yeah. I love that. And I love your personality and people are very drawn to you. And, you know, our, our stories are so similar. I have three kids also, and I had all three of my children in five years. So I was either mm-hmm. pregnant or breastfeeding for like seven or eight years. And then me too, me too. <laughs> after that, I was like, I mean, I barely remember that time. It's like a blur, but it was after that where I really had some second health issues. Cause they just, I mean, they literally like stuck a lot. The life out of you and you're trying so hard to keep up with with your own body and nutrition but yes yeah. So, yeah that's crazy that I feel like that's the same as my story literally one of the when I started my first whole 30 it was because I broke my foot I was at I was at all three at a park and my toddler little girl was running into the street and I ran I twisted my ankle I broke my foot my foot would not heal back it's still broken but I was like I went to the doctor and he was like your bone health isn't good and I'm like why like I mean I've always been healthy. I've always eaten well, you know? So that was when I really got serious. And I was like, okay, now I need to like eat healthy, like so that my bones are healthy. <laughs> like right. it's this whole new perspective of taking care of yourself. But after, yeah, pregnant and nursing, they really suck everything out of you, literally. <laughs> they do. And like I said, it's like those years are like a blur. And I was the same way mm-hmm. with doing the one-on-ones and the health coaching. And I did them for a while um, but they do, they're, they're very time intensive and people still ask a lot if I do those, but they're very time intensive. And I felt like, I'm sure you felt the same way. Like you're repeating the same things over mm-hmm. and over I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get it all in a course. And then I know that I'm hitting all the topics that people need to hear about blood sugar regulation and I'm not missing anything. Um, so yeah, so very, very similar stories, but yeah, so you kind of, you definitely exploded on Instagram. And, um, I just, like I said, I love the, the recipes and they're, and I think how our, our stories are similar too. It's like, I'm a dietitian. So I talk about food all the time and I just talk about nutrition and I love it, but I, I don't love to cook. Like people probably yeah. assume that I do. I don't mind it if I have the time and I don't have anything, you know, going on when is that that's like never it's never I know it's me too so- me too I'm like if I can turn like that's why I love Christmas I'm like if I can turn Christmas music on and make cookies and it's like but it's like everything turns into this hectic I have one hour to do this and it's not fun and I have you know what I mean so yeah I think too any recipe where you have to chop up too many veggies and all the stuff I'm like I don't have time for that but right. I love veggies but <laughs> no I think we make this easy <laughs> it was just recently how I heard you say I don't even love cooking I'm like oh I love that <laughs> I love it is that's where it is I, I put it I was like it is comical that I have two cookbooks and I really don't like to cook but but that but my easy, my recipes are easy I love a slow cooker let's, right. let's make it simple <laughs> right and I love to eat well it's not like I want to eat junk right. and grab stuff that is is in a package I'd love to eat well I just would love somebody else to make it for me, but my husband yeah. is ever in the kitchen. <laughs> my <laughs> daughter is rarely home. She's the only one who will meal prep. So yeah, this down to me. All right. So let's talk about how you come up with your recipes um, and how, well, let's, let's, let's jump back and talk about yeah. how you like come up with like, what do you I know you center your recipes around protein. Are there mm-hmm. certain, you know, things that you're looking for? Like I, I want to look for this amount of protein or um, you know, how do you go about that? Because I like, I have a protein guide I give to people and say like, this food has this many pro- you know, grams of protein, but they still struggle. They're still struggling. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, okay, I, I'm getting 70 or 80 grams of protein. And maybe that's enough for, for some people or, you know, certain days that's certainly enough. But I know I tell women to strive for around a hundred grams as, you know, kind of a, a target, but um, how do you come up with putting your meals together? I would say a lot of the time, the tweak is really in the fat. Like I try to do lean proteins and add like fats with like cheese and more fun ways to add fat. Um, Or like in my baked goods, like a peanut butter or nut butter, that's going to taste better than necessarily, you know, anyway, the bad. So I do definitely try to like tweak fats in my recipe. So I do focus on lean proteins. Um, and that makes it a little bit easier. So you're not going crazy. I'm not a calorie person, but so you're not going crazy high on calories necessarily. Cause I think some recipes will be keto. So it's low carbon, blood sugar friendly, but then we're really, really going overboard on our fats and our proteins, not quite high enough for me personally. I feel my best with the high protein. So I, I'll even some days get like 140 grams in a day, but I don't really count every day. And like you said, like if I get I'm not as hungry one day and get like 80, that's no big deal. Like, I think it's what you do most consistently. So like, yeah, but it's the one at 100, 120, 
grams a day is kind of like a feel good range, but I feel like I don't even do snacks. I'm, I'm kind of like, you yeah, I know sometimes you do two meals a day. I always see your stories and I like seeing your meals and stuff, but I pretty much do three meals a day. No snacks. I fast a little, I, you know, I don't do that every day either, but I feel like, um, if you really are getting like that 40 grams of protein per meal, it just kind of makes it doable. So for me to not be overwhelmed with the daily number, I think just focusing per meal. So with putting these recipes together, I'm just like, how can we make it 30 to 40 grams of protein without being a million calories? Um, so like, you know, that le- veggies, non-starchy veggies and leaner, leaner fat, leaner protein so that the fat's not crazy high. Kind yeah. Of tweak. Yeah. 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 That's, a, that's a, a great way to start at least. And mm-hmm. and go from there. And I agree. Like I, um, I've done higher fat, like I've focused on fat for a while and I just didn't feel good as good. Like I almost felt like a little heavier, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like a little lethargic. And I think most women probably do feel better if they're going to follow a ketogenic approach, the higher protein and not going overboard on, on the fat for sure. Yeah. And it's always individual, but I'm the same. I just, I don't think I digest, digest a lot of fat. Well, but I am really passionate about like breaking your fast, that first meal being high protein, high fat, not high fat, but having some fat, because I feel like that balance, like, you know, it just makes a difference for those, those cravings all day. It makes a difference for cravings. Like if you skip fat at breakfast, you're going to have those carb cravings in the afternoon because it needs fat. You know, you don't crave the fat, you crave carbs. Yeah. So I do feel like, like I love my smoothies. Um, I do love smoothies and the collie bowls and all. I love to do a supplement with a protein powder for breakfast for me personally, just because I have a sweet tooth and I feel like eggs don't make me as full. I don't know why I love eggs, but I'd rather have them at lunch um, or or dinner. And so that's just kind of my biggie with um, like, I do make sure I have like avocado or two full tablespoons of the nut butter in my smoothie, just to make sure I have enough fat at that first meal and fiber and protein and all the things. But then the rest of the day, like lunch might be really lean. It might just be cottage cheese and just like one whole egg. Yeah. Um, like, so not a whole lot of fat, the other meals necessarily, but I do really focus on fat for the first meal. But it was just funny how that you kind of tweak and learn as you go with your body feedback yeah. and what makes you feel your best. Yeah. And like you said, everybody's different where I feel I, I eat three eggs almost every morning, but I also mm-hmm. eat like some macadamia nuts for some extra mm-hmm. fat cheese mm-hmm. or something along those lines. But if I eat that, I'm full for like four to five months, like a long time. Sometimes I'm like, oh, it's one o'clock. And, and, and I'm to the point, I feel like when you really knock out that first meal and make it high protein and regulate your blood sugar, that is when the appetite suppression and the appetite Mm -hmm. really comes into play because I swear I used to, when I used to eat higher carb breakfast, it it would be like two to three hours. I'm hungry. You're starving. I would be like, it's 10 30. Why am I starving? Or like, I just had breakfast. I know when I used to do, I, I would have every day was a banana and one tablespoon of almond butter. Like when I was in that bad cycle, that was my breakfast. So I was having like seven grams of protein. For, I was like, no wonder I ate the whole pantry at four o'clock in the afternoon, <laughs> but I didn't know, but it was whole 30, you know, I mean, so that's where it's confusing. So the, the balance matters, the blood sugar balance and the high protein, not necessarily just healthy food or yeah. clean food. You know, I think that balance makes a huge difference. The nutrient balance. Yeah. It's, it's, I'm glad that you brought that up because yeah, you can follow a paleo diet. You can follow a whole 30 diet. You can eat very, very clean and still have severe blood sugar dysregulation. Yeah. And the blood sugar swings and the spikes and the highs and the lows and, and not ever full. So yeah, I did. I was there, you know, cause I said I had a hypoglycemia, but I forgot to mention that I was, um, I had in, uh, insulin resistant glucose, the fasting levels too. So I had that too going on too. So it wasn't until I started my Instagram and started wearing the, the glucose monitor all the time that I really realized I was like, Oh, okay. Well now I can really see yeah. that feedback, that data, of the size of sweet potato I can have without yeah. a spike and that kind of stuff that really helped. Do you um, remember but yeah. what your fasting insulin was when you first got it tracked? It was in, the, it was when I, when they said I was pre-diabetic at the doctor. It was in the, um, it was like one ten. Oh, okay. So your blood sugar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. What did I say? Did I say well, fasting I insulin? If you had the fasting. Yeah. If you had the yeah. fasting insulin. Oh, fasting. I have. I can't remember what it was. Um, well, I get that now. I didn't do fasting. I meant fasting glucose, but I'll do, I do. I pay extra at my physicals now. I'm like, I just want to know what my fasting insulin <laughs> is. I don't know what, I mean, insurance usually covers it, but I just like to know. <laughs> yeah. 
So I was curious because my fasting insulin was high when my blood sugars were normal, my weight was normal, but mm-hmm. that insulin resistance was likely brewing for oh my God, 20 years. And that's why mm-hmm. I was so hungry. All you know, there were so many things that went into that. I wasn't able to burn fat well. And mm-hmm. even though my blood sugars were completely normal. Huh. Isn't that crazy? I mean, our, our body, there's so many things that go into it. <laughs> there are, there are. So tell us more about your protein powder, because I know, yeah, you say that 120 number and it can be hard. Like even like I have women who would be like, I'm like, what do you eat for breakfast? Oh, an egg and a peanut butter toast. I'm like, okay, that's like 11 grams of protein. And they're, they're like, I don't know how to get to that, that one wherever they are, 90, 120, wherever, whatever your target is. Um, so sometimes those protein powders come in very handy because it's one thing if you're just shy, like maybe you're getting a hundred grams of protein and, and maybe that's all you need, but there's other women who are like consistently getting 50 or 60 grams of protein every single day and really struggling to up it. Or I always have people who, you know, have some sort of allergies or, um, you know, intolerances. And Mm -hmm. it's always nice to point them toward a protein powder. So when you were developing your protein powder, what, what kind of research did you put into it? And what did you come up with? So I know there's a million out there. Yes. So so I know, but I was like, I want mine to be different just to simplify nutrition, like simplify nourishment, like what's the best one. So now that I'm in perimenopause, I know how important it is to have like complete muscle building protein. So we keep that muscle in age as we age. So I was like, I want one with all, like all a hundred percent, all 25 grams of protein per serving is muscle building protein. So I went with a whey isolate, um, the process it is dairy, but the process of making it an isolate gets rid of like 99% of the lactose. So it is like, you know, easier to digest. Um, I, since I do love a protein supplement, like, like I love meat, I love eggs, but I don't want to eat them more than once a day. Like I just don't. And I have a sweet tooth. Like I love, like, like I said, my, my journey, that smoothie for breakfast, that loaded smoothie for breakfast, nothing makes me feel like it. I love it. I love it. So since I'm eating this daily, my husband's eating it daily. My three teenagers love smoothies daily and all that there um, and sports and stuff. And so I just want, how could I have one to have peace of mind? Like knowing all of these ingredients are great. I got rid of the gums and the lecithins that are in a lot, but are emulsifiers. So they're not clumpy. I did my research and I did acacia fiber instead. And it, blend super smooth, no clumps. Like it's crazy. You can use a hand frother and there's no, no lumps just since I'm doing it daily. I'm, I'm all about well, wellness without obsession. I'm not like picky about certain ingredients or fear mongering, Yeah, but I feel like if I'm having this every single day as a meal, I don't want to be having gums and lectins every single day, you know, or lecithins or however you say it. <laughs> the sunflower lecithin. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so I really wanted High protein to be all muscle building protein, easy to digest, no add-ons or anything like that. I did add um, an organic MCT oil just in in case you need to just have it with almond milk or water just to make you a little bit full. So there's a little bit of healthy fats in there and just to slow down digestion since isolate does digest quick for muscle building. Um, So that was kind of my passion around that. And then also since I have so many baked goods, like my flour is protein brownies and all this stuff, all proteins aren't created equal. Like collagen, you know, they're good in cookies or vegan. It doesn't really set good in baked goods. And then, um, what else is there like beef and egg? Those don't bake that super great either. They work, but it's not, you know, egg will turn into a custard. So anyway, um, I wanted to have a protein powder where I can like, this will make a cake texture. Like it's bakes great with all my recipes. And so that was another thing that I was super passionate about, but yeah, just since I I love a protein supplement because I do feel like that breakfast, like if you hit 40 or 50 grams of protein at breakfast instead of 10 or 20, then you don't have to, like nobody, you can't eat like four chicken breasts for dinner. I mean, too much protein at once might digest as glucose too. Like we want to keep our blood sugar stable. So that's just where, yeah. So I love a protein smoothie um, and I'm super excited about B teaspoon protein. And I, I'm starting out with just ch- I have a chocolate and a vanilla, but they're delish and it launched, um, it launched early, like well, mid-September it launched. And so it's going great so far. Everybody's saying it tastes really good. So I'm excited. I love <laughs> it's like, I liked it. We went back and forth with samples and really tweaked and tried to get it good. And um, I'm just glad I'm like, well, we all liked it. I hope everybody liked it. And so far, so good. <laughs> you never know with that kind of stuff, kind of stuff. Yeah. Face. <laughs> right. No, I, I definitely need to order some for sure. So what do you put in your loaded smoothie? 
So I always, I, I love um, high fiber too. So it's, it, you know, it's important to have each nutrient. So I actually use psyllium husk. I love psyllium husk. So I put that in there. There's almost like 15 grams of fiber too, and like 40 or 50 grams of protein. So I'll do a serving of protein powder. I love peanut butter. Um, I know other, you know, cashew, almond, those are all great. You can't taste them. Like I love, love, love peanut butter. So that's a thing for me for healthy fats. I do a natural peanut butter. Um, there's a lot of veggies you can't taste that really add volume to make you super full. So like yellow squash, zucchini, rice, cauliflower, any of those frozen, like I just buy fresh yellow squash and chop them into little di like coins and throw them in the freezer and you can add those. And so it's really thick and creamy and you have to eat it, like sit down and eat it with a spoon, you know, so you're chewing your smoothie to shut off all the, all the things and not just feel like you drank a meal. <laughs> yeah. So um, you can't taste any of those veggies. And then I usually add, you know, some sea salt. I think salt um, or electrolytes can enhance the, the flavor. Um, and if I add fruit, I do usually um, a third of a cup or so just to keep blood, my blood sugar stable. So that's what I found. Like I'll do half a banana or, you know, some berries or something like that, or I'll put them on top for chewing. But that's pretty much most of all my smoothie. I have a million smoothie recipes just because I like to change it up. I can't do the same one every day. But um, like a pecan pie smoothie or pumpkin ginger snap smoothie, or I have all sorts of fun ones. So um, I change it up, but they're definitely loaded. They're, they got all the things. It's, it's a meal for sure. <laughs> well, I'll have to go back and try some because I've never been a big smoothie person just because yeah. of, like I feel like I'd rather like eat food. But yeah. you ha I've never, I've never put the psyllium husk in, in my smoothie. So that would make a huge difference. So I'll have to go. Yeah, it's it's filling. I love it. And it does. I mean, it, you know, that, that husk, it can get kind of gooey as it sits, but yeah. if you eat it right after you make it, it's fine. Yeah. But I really like it. Nice, you know, there are a lot of people who are, who are wanting to eat a good filling breakfast, but they're traveling or they're going to work mm -hmm. or or whatever or commuting. Yeah. And you can even put them in like a thermos or a Yeti cup and they're, mm -hmm. they stay cold for like five hours. So if you're yeah. like fast or you want to wait and have your smoothie at nine or 10 or whatever your eating routine is, um, it can be helpful. Or in the evening, I'll plan out my day, kind of plan out my day. But if I have like kids sports and I need to have a smoothie at the ballpark, then I'll have eggs for breakfast and have my one smoothie for dinner. Um, but I feel like it's just like a wellness tool almost, yeah. you know, yeah. to have in your back pocket to hit your protein. Yes. Yeah. Even if you use it once or twice a week, it, it would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Something, something different to have. I know I fall, you know, I fall into eating the same things, even though I tell people like change it. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm having eggs again. I'm kind of, you know, we have our own chicken. So I love to eat those because I know exactly what my chickens ate and drank. Yeah, even nice. this morning, I'm like, okay, I, I just, I ate like eggs five times. It's like, I can't, I can't do eggs this morning. Um, but usually I'm, you know, you just, you go in spurts and it, well, and it's easy to keep some constants. If you have these go-to meals that make you feel good and you don't have to think about it, sometimes it's just easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you have three teenagers, just like I do. Well, I, I'm lying. I lied. My 20, my daughter's now 21, but, um, and my middle son is in college. So I had two voracious eaters in my house for, <laughs> for several <laughs> years though, because my boys are 19 and 16 and now I'm just down to one, but there's 42. I mean, the yeah. Um, that they eat is I mean I think I eat a lot for my size but like oh my goodness you, you, yeah. the amount of food that teenage boys can put down is alarming um but tell us how you go about like planning your meals because you said it's like oh I don't want to spend a ton of time in the kitchen and I've seen you do some of some batch cooking which I love like I'm all about doing a little bit of prep on Sunday if I if I'm home like take an hour or two and do a bunch of prep for this. so how do you go about planning your meals for your family because I know a lot of people struggle with that yeah so I'm right behind you like I have my I have boys that are 18 and 16 and then a daughter that's 14 and so my boys play football and baseball so yeah I mean, we're we're going through the groceries right now but I'd say with planning my week since I don't like to cook I try to cook three times a week and then I fill in with leftovers or smoothies or eggs or just, you know, like fr freezer turkey burgers, throw it, throw it with something. But with my prepping, I just, my personality, I'm not type A, I'm not like a meal prepper with perfect Tupperwares. But if I have time and margin on Sunday, I try to do that. Like last night I'd, I made, um, when I was just cooking dinner, I just went ahead and made a bunch of veggies, like everything I bought at the store. And then they're just sitting in Tupperware's roast, like roasted broccoli. I did delicata squash and just while I'm cooking. And I had some margin, I put fall cozy music on and, um, 
and it just took like about an hour and a half. I don't know. It was it wasn't a big deal. And now I'm not cooking tonight, you know. So I'm not I probably won't cook tomorrow night either. I might just throw those veggies with some eggs or something and the kids can have a frozen burger. I can cook on a skillet or something like that. I do love to prep. If I have time, I'll do like sweet potatoes or white potatoes in the slow cooker. I found that's a super easy way to cook it. It just takes a couple hours on low, but I love to have those for, it's just, you know, a cold potatoes in the fridge. And then I can make a batch of my brownies that have sweet potatoes, or um, I'll just chop up sweet potatoes and have with eggs, like a hash or something. And I like to eat them cold. Like I, I just, I love, you know, but so there's something satisfying about having potato. I still satisfied when I have, you know, a just right amount of potato, but not too much, but um, I love those. Um, but I do, I meal prep for my boys lunch, which I know sounds crazy, but they don't like the school lunch. They don't like sandwiches, don't make them full and they don't like them. So I've started, I posted about it, but I do, I cook like a whole box of rice. It's like six cups of rice with six cups of bone broth. It's like a one-to-one. And then in the same pot, I do taco meat. Um, so it takes about 30 minutes. Like after the rice is done, I do the taco meat, but um, I do meal prep their lunches and I just throw it in the lunchbox with some, you know, a protein bar and an apple and that kind of stuff. And it really makes them full since they have practice at football in the morning and in the afternoon because they're both on varsity or whatever their ages. Um, so they're just hungry right now. So I do, I, I try to feed them that kind of stuff. But like I said, it takes 30 minutes. And so that makes my life easier for them to have to grab for lunch. And I don't have to think about them being starving all the time and because they're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I do I'll I only cook there. yeah yeah I probably only cook like three times a week it's not a lot because like I said I don't like to cook so I'll do chili or something and hopefully there's yeah. leftovers the next night or it just works out yeah that's what I've learned to do and now right now we only have three in the house instead of five and man those extra two it's like ooh, when they're home like my son was home this last weekend <laughs> And it's like, you know, twice amount of food is gone, but I just, I've learned to just double things when, yeah. when the kids are home and make large batches of things and like make five pounds of taco meat at once rather than mm -hmm. two pounds and, um, freeze, freeze some things and, or send them back with, with my, you know, my college kids or whatever it is, but yeah, that's what I, I do. do like keep it simple and, and not just about it. It's kind of like while the oven's on, while you're yeah, get, making yeah. the sheet pan dirty while, yeah. Like I used to cook, yeah. I remember when newlyweds, I cooked one pound of taco meat, then I went to two and now, yeah, I cook five if I'm doing <laughs> spaghetti or tacos or anything, but if there's any leftover, it's like, well, they can just make nachos when they get home from school. You know, it's like, it's always Never a bad idea to have a bunch of protein in the fridge ready. Yes. So then you can just throw it on a salad or a potato or, you know, parts of palm pasta in the microwave. I mean, yeah. it, you know, if you have a prep, it's way easier because yeah. if you're just starving and go for like chips and salsa yeah. that, that you can eat them all and not be full. Yeah. <laughs> we got to have our protein. <laughs> and I agree. It's so much mindset. Like I'll, if I know like, okay, this Sunday, which I'm not home a lot without, working. But if I am, it's like just knowing the mindsets there. And like you said, putting on a music, putting on a podcast that I really want to mm -hmm. listen to. We don't have a TV in our, um, in our kitchen, but sometimes I'll just, you know, like if there's something I want to watch, I'll put it on my computer or whatever. And it just makes the prep so, so much more fun. And, mm -hmm. and then it's done for the week. Yes. Just make it, try to make it enjoyable. But yeah, I feel like I had, I had a lot of years of the younger kit when they were younger and doing sports and that's all day Sunday. And then you're just start yeah. out Monday morning exhausted and there's, you still have to go to the grocery store, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I remember all those years. I'm kind of out of that cycle right now, but, yeah. um, but yeah, a little prep goes a long way. And like I said, you can do it. If you're cooking dinner Monday night, go ahead and roast veggies while the oven's on, roast all the veggies, you know, yep. so you don't throw away um yeah. unused veggies on Thursday <laughs> yeah yeah and just having like a meat and some veggies prepped and starches and just you know keeping it that simple mm -hmm. and, and just mix and match whatever is in there yeah. um yeah so otherwise my my boys had the tendency to drive through somewhere I'm like no <laughs> yeah and it adds up when they're hungry and they'll spend 30 bucks at Chipotle oh you know, it's like what what just happened <laughs> I know yeah. I feel like our whole family used to eat at Chipotle for like 35 and now it's like 60 because they have yeah. to you know they want the double protein <laughs> yeah yeah well, Everything. I that a lot of places they could eat but yeah it they're they're expensive to feed mm -hmm. um well tell us about your new cookbook because I know you get a lot of questions about well are all of your recipes that are on your website and you know can I just get them off your website are they different in the cookbook and and how did you go about you know planning what what is in there and it's it's called blood sugar balance if I'm yes the blood sugar balance cookbook yes awesome um 
So there's over a hundred recipes and I put in some favorites, like some of my most popular recipes, like my balanced meal chili and the flourless brownies and the peanut butter blondie muffins, like some of my really go-to in the high protein pimento cheese, some of those, um, there's about like 20 of my super popular recipes, but the rest are cookbook exclusive. That was in the contract with the publisher. So those are all new recipes and there's really a balance of their smoothies, there's breakfast, there's lunch, dinner, and then there's power bowls, which could be a meal prep if you'd like to meal prep or if the power bowl chapter also could just be dinner and you kind of build your own bowl for the family. Um, so yeah, and well, did I say desserts and desserts and veggie sides. So there's a whole bunch. It's like over a hundred recipes. Um, but like, yeah, like I said, 85% of those will never be on my recipe blog. Um, but a lot of other ones, like I do have a lot of recipes on there and, and there's a search engine on my website where you can just type in chicken and all the chicken recipes will come up. So that's, that's super easy. Um, but yeah, the cookbook, I'm so excited about it. So, um, let's see what else, what was the question? <laughs> just what was in there and how you, you know, how you went about planning the recipes. And I know I have it pre-ordered. Well, when we're recording this, it's not out yet, but it'll be out October Eight. Eight. Yeah, I'm so excited. I just got my copies yesterday. So it was the first time for me to like really see, see, see it or yeah. It, was, yeah, it was just a few days ago. So I'm super excited, but yeah. So since it's the blood sugar balance cookbook, they knew diabetics might be using it. And so all the macros are in there in case you need to know your, to your total carbs and that kind of stuff with your insulin or whatever you work with your doctor with that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of recipes. I tested, I test them all. I test all my recipes on Instagram. I've tested them all with the glucose monitor, but if, you know, so they keep my blood sugar stable and I just know how to tweak that just right amount that keeps my blood sugar stable. But of course, blood sugar is yeah. individual, but I think it's helpful um, just to know that they're tested. And um, mm -hmm. so most of them are pretty low. Carb. I mean, a lot of them could be in the keto category. You know, a lot of them are pretty low carb. I tried to include some vegan options, like with the tofu scramble, that's like eggs. Um, so th there's pretty much everything, you know, like any, any way you eat, it could work for sure. Um, and like the veggie sides are all real light. They're low fat too, but they're, you know, like t roasted thyme carrots and, um, Brussels sprouts. All that. They're all easy. Yeah. Um, and this time of year, I feel like there's even like a harvest salad with pears and pecans. And it's like, there's a lot of good fall ones that would work great for Thanksgiving. If you want, or you want to bring some like one healthy dish to Thanksgiving or whatever. Um, Anyway, yeah, I'm excited. I'm yeah, excited. I am too. I, I have a lot of cookbooks, but I feel like you can never have. Can I know, right? Yeah. Any that, that are good ones that, because I know like I'll go to yours all the time because I just center my meals the exact same way as you do. So for the blood sugar balance, were you mainly looking at protein fiber and some fat then when you were developing your recipes? Yes, for sure. Keeping them low, low-ish carbs. They're not zero carb. They're, you know, some of them are a little higher in carb than other, but they kept me stable. Like I said, but of course, yeah, fiber, healthy fats, but I love the balance of like more moderate fats and yeah. not super high fat. So it's not keto, but it's there. A lot of them are higher in protein. Um, but yeah, I think I've just figured out the ingredients I, I use in the balance. So like there's even like a chicken and broccoli and rice casserole. And so there's one cup of rice, there is rice in it, but it's one cup for the whole casserole and the rest is cauliflower rice. So it's like the kids will eat it. I think if it was all cauliflower, cauliflower rice, my kids would be like, what is this? But since there's some rice mixed in, I feel like it's family friendly, um, but it keeps still keeps you stable because like your serving probably just has like one spoon of rice. <laughs> it's like a tablespoon of rice. So, um, so I try to really get that balance down. I feel like I figured it out. I always, I don't, I feel like I have what recipe favor or something because I don't even like to cook. It's hilarious, but I, I I'll um, add up the macros. I'm like, wow, it's so good. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I didn't think of that with the cauli cauli rice because when when I make certain dishes, like I'll have cauli rice or I'll have, um, oh, the noodles you were talking about, the, the hearts of palm, yeah, yeah. The hearts of palm instead. And then I'll make like a gluten-free noodle for the rest of the family. But I use your, I do your cauli bowls with cauli the rice cauliflower. Oh, good. Yeah. Those are my favorite. How about I mixing it with regular rice? Well, that's genius. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah. But I do that too. I mean, if we're making just basic spaghetti, I'll make them regular spaghetti. And I'll do hearts of palm or what, you know, it's, it's everything's always tweakable so that you're yeah. not cooking different meals for the whole family, but, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. And so your cauli bowls are, you're mainly like, I've started probably eating those like maybe last fall about a year ago. So you're mainly using like the, the frozen cauliflower, like rice cauliflower, and you can mix so many things in with that. Yeah. So it tastes like a big, I like volume with that. Yeah, it's a pretty too. big bowl of your full and set aside. It's a pretty big bowl. It tastes like oatmeal. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but it is all cauliflower rice with no oats. And of course I have recipes like overnight oats and those kind of things where all, mine are all, like a whole serving of oats, half a cup always spikes me really high. Um, so I do half a serving of oats and I never add fruit with oats usually because fruit plus oats, even if it's half a serving would spike me. So that's where, um, I try to keep it balanced, but yeah, I mean, oats aren't a no, no, you know, some people can do them, but I love those collie bowls. Um, they're just so filling and you're getting like three servings of veggies in for breakfast. It's like a warm version of a smoothie and I love them. Yeah. I'm very fun. sensitive to oats too. Like I can do mm -hmm. a little bit, especially if they're like in a bar or something like there's just a little right. bit, but I get spike and I get bloating if I, if I have yeah. to. Yeah. I, so it's just not worth it. need to digest. So, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, but um, yeah, that sounds great. What are your thoughts on, like, what are your favorite alternative sweeteners? I get this question a lot that you use for cooking specifically and that you like, and um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you have stevia in your protein powders. Correct? I do. So it's funny. I love monk fruit, monk fruit, stevia, and allulose are kind of my go-to natural blood sugar friendly sweeteners. Um, but personally, I don't digest allulose well. It made me bloated, gassy. It messed my digestion up, so, which is a bummer because I think that's a really good new yeah, one, but it okay. didn't work for me. So, um, and I like monk fruit for baking. It does a lot of the time, the kind that's a one-to-one -one swap with sugar that you use in baking, it does have some erythritol in it. I know there's some new studies out that people are getting fearful of erythritol. Um, but I, I don't love those studies. I feel like it was a really large dose and they gave it to people that weren't healthy to start with. Um, so, but anyway, so I use monk fruit with erythritol. I use that in my baking recipes, but stevia is a great natural sweetener. And I ended up using stevia with the protein powder because, you know, I wanted it perfect. And I'm a food smeller. I smell things. I don't know. I'm weird. But the vanilla with monk fruit had this really weird odor and they were like, it's the monk fruit. And I was like, well, scratch it. I don't want smelly protein powder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it smelled weird. Um, so anyway, so I went with stevia. It smells great. <laughs> so stevia. Stevia monk fruit, I'd say, are my personal go-tos just because I can't do allulose, but I like those. Um, yeah. Most. And again, just how everyone's different. Like I can't tell yeah. allulose. Okay. I don't use it a lot and you don't find mm -hmm. it in a lot of like commercially made foods. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of new or something. Yeah. Or maybe there's yeah. a reason why it's not in stuff. That I don't could know. be. That could be. Um, but I feel like sugar alcohols, like those, are, I can't do yeah. a lot of those. Yeah. Um, those have, have all, I've always had digestive issues with those. Yeah. But. And there's no sugar alcohols in the protein either. That's where it's like, I really wanted it to be as clean as possible and yeah. sugar friendly. Yeah. Um, so I skipped those and that. Great. Any, um, bread substitutes in your cookbook or, or bread so that you like to use? Cause I know that's like, I always use base culture cause it's just, mm -hmm. there's, there's a, um, grocery store local to us that carries it and I don't eat it a ton, but I just keep it in my freezer if I do want to have a sandwich or, or, but I always have people asking about bread substitutes and, and what, what we're the, using. The main one I use is I use Ezekiel, um, sure. just the, the orange bag, the frozen. Yeah. Cause I can do gluten. I don't think there's a lot in there, but, um, but yeah, I use Ezekiel more than anything. And I'm trying to remember, I just bought one yesterday. It's a new brand and I was all excited about it. And there's only, it's, there's 11 carbs, but it's 11 fiber. Um, and it's not wow. weird at it. It's not corn fiber. And I'm like, what? I just bought it. It's in the kitchen. I could go look at it. <laughs> I can't really think of what the brand is, but my husband just had it on an egg sandwich that it was really good. So I'm excited. Um, but yeah, I've tried base culture, but that's like, yeah, there's, it's a new one that I keep hearing about and I bought it yesterday, but I can't think of what it's called. Okay. Yeah. It's that's, that's the one that I found that I digest well. I, I used to do Ezekiel when I had gluten, but I am gluten intolerant or I, I get bloated from it. So yeah. It's not worth it. There's, I feel like there's a lot of good alternatives, but some, some of those keto breads though, like, or the low carb oh, breads, yeah. they have so many horrible ingredients yes, and really the weird, like corn soluble fiber messes me up. Like I can't yeah. do that. Like they add all this weird fiber to make the net mm -hmm. carb low, but right. you're eating crap, but it's a bunch of crap to make your net carb low. Yeah. You know, so that's where it's like, yeah. it's individual and pay attention to that body feedback and see how you digest it. But yeah, um, but yeah, base culture, that, that's a great brand. I almost feel like if it's not frozen, <laughs> And there's something in there that's going to mess up my gut. <laughs> right. I know. It's like how it's the, the shelf stable gets scary with all the ingredients for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, anything else you want to talk about as far as your protein powders or um, your recipe book coming out? We didn't really talk about Well-Made Academy, uh, but anything else you, you want to talk about that we didn't touch on? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Well-Made Academy, I created an online course. It's self-paced. 
I created that just because I could not keep up with the one-to-ones. And like you said, I was repeating myself, but I'm glad I started with one-to-ones because I learned a lot of people's pain points and what they wanted and what was going on. But it really got to be um, a lot because a lot of people's relationship with food even is heavy or very emotional. And so then I feel like I kind of took that on too, because it is, it's a lot. So, um, so yeah, I made well-made Academy and it's just kind of, you know, about blood sugar balance, your metabolism, how to exercise efficiently to keep your muscle in aging. But there's also modules for even, um, men there's perimenopause or if you're pregnant or nursing or anything like that. And I have a registered dietitian on staff that has approved all that info. We tweaked it. So anyway, so that's been great. I love well-made Academy. And then, um, yeah, my new cookbook, I have a first cookbook I self-published, but all those recipes are on Instagram for free. There's also in my website for free. And there's also an ebook version of that. That's much cheaper since it's pricey since it was self-published, but my new blood sugar bounce cookbook. Yeah. I'm excited. That's on, um, you can pre-order or order it's on Amazon and, um, Barnes and Noble online and all that stuff. So I'm super excited about that. And then, yeah, the protein powder, all this is at once. It's funny because yes. the cookbook, the cookbook, I finished doing that last fall, you know, and then the protein powder, it's like, all this has taken two years worth of work and it's all happening at the same time. So that's, it's a blessing and it's exciting. It's just, um, it's a big season for the peachy spoon right now. Yes. <laughs> yes, it definitely is. I know that's why when, when you scheduled your, I'm like, wow, she's got so much going on. I've <laughs> I got to get her in here. While <laughs> yeah, I'm real thankful. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. It's been great. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. I don't have anything else okay. to say. <laughs> yeah. I always, I love your, your account just because it's, yeah, your personality is down to earth and um, you were kind of in the, the same time of life and um, just, I'm always looking for easy. I don't want to say easy, you know, but like easy way. Yeah. Yeah. Family well, and not be a slave in the kitchen because, um, I, I know. And I, like you just did a big kitchen remodel too. Like I love our house and, but our kitchen has a huge, like the stairwells in between the kitchen and the living room. Mm-hmm. And so it's not open. So I just feel like boxed off when I'm in there mm-hmm. and, you know, in our dining area. And I, I just don't like to, I don't like to feel alone. Not your favorite. I know what you mean. I know. Yeah. The whole renovation part was hard. Um, yeah. But, you know, I did the slow cooker a lot, <laughs> but it worked out. It happened. And maybe, in the, and I am excited to get back in the kitchen, I think, cause I had the break. Um, but yes. Um, so you had all your, your recipes already basically finalized before the kitchen renovation. Or that doing- worked out. Yeah. I submitted oh, like the, yeah. la- it was all due like the week before we started renovate what we started okay. the whatever demo. So that worked out. The timing on that worked out great. Yeah. yeah. That would have been a nightmare. <laughs> like how do you even. Right. I was like, well, we can't, we can't start the kitchen until I'm done with the cookbook stuff. Cause yeah. Um, yeah, that was a lot of, that was a lot of weeks of, I have, I was like, I have to do five recipes a week, but what was the pressure was that you have to add up the macros and it has to be good too. You know what I mean? It's like more than not just throwing some ingredients together and it tastes good. It has to taste good and be easy. Cause I don't like to cook and be a balance of nutrients to, um, nourish your body well and keep your blood sugar stable. So it's a, wow. it was a lot of things, but I did it. <laughs> you did it. You're on the other side now. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's an incredible amount of work. So we appreciate you and, and all that you're doing to keep us well. And you know, us busy moms are always looking for ways to feed our family well, feed ourselves well, keep our, our whole family nourished. And, um, I, I love your work. So I, oh, I'm thanks. really excited for your cook to come out and, um, is it okay to share some of the recipe? Like if you take a picture of the recipe and say, this is in Meredith's cookbook, you got to go get it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we totally <laughs> should. Yeah. And I, yesterday, yesterday was my sister's birthday and I made the, um, feeling good chocolate cake. It's a chocolate ganache cake. Um, but there's like avocado in it and sweet yeah. potato and all this stuff. And I always like, I don't tell anybody what's in it until after they eat it. Cause that will freak people out. But nobody ever knows. It tastes like a decadent chocolate uh-huh. cake. So I know really my kids, like my youngest son is just, I, I can't tell him what's in things either. And nor- no. normally he won't, if he knows it's like gluten-free or not any kind of commercially made, he just won't try it. So and then, aren't they funny? I usually have to and lie it's... and be like, no, I got that from wherever, or I made it with regular gluten. Yeah. Or... yeah. We don't talk about cauliflower rice. We don't talk about it, um, but it's in the taco meat a lot of the time. 
Ooh, <laughs> you can good. sneak in a cup of that. Yeah, yeah, you can sneak it in, but we just don't talk about it. They don't know. They just eat it and think it's good. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on and everybody go get her cookbook October 8th or after um, available on Amazon and you can get it at, at Barnes and Noble online. We'll definitely link it in the show notes and her um, Instagram page and her website. So thanks for coming on today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. It was so fun chatting.